Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade system of equations. We have b squared plus c squared minus a squared, a squared plus c squared minus b squared, and the sum of the squares. And you can see what's on the right hand side. And we're going to be solving for a, b, and c. Since there are three variables and three equations, we should be able to solve it. This looks like a quadratic system, doesn't it? And I'll be presenting two methods. I kind of thought about the original idea first, but that's going to be the second method. But I thought about it first, so that should be the first method. So let's start with the second method. Okay, <laughs> cool. So here's the second method, and we haven't started with the second method for a while, so I think it will be good. Now, my second method is basically going to be uh, elimination, right? Or it could be substitution too. So I'm thinking if I take, and this method is not necessarily going to be complete because I haven't tested it out first or before. So I noticed that if I add the first and the second equations, a lot of things are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with C or C squared. That's good. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and add these equations up. And notice that um, a squared is going to cancel out, b squared is going to cancel out. We're going to get c squared plus c squared. Let's just copy that to c squared. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have root 3bc plus ac. Awesome. Now, obviously, we can factor out a c on the right hand side. Let's just do it. Square root of 3b plus a. Notice that c equals 0 is a solution right so if c is equal to 0 we'll get an identity which is good so c equals 0 is definitely a solution what does that imply that's a good question we can just plug it in and find out what that's going to turn into for example if c is equal to 0 i plug it into the first one i get b squared minus a squared equals 0 which means b squared equals a squared right that's the first conclusion and then from the second equation if c is 0 I'm also getting a squared minus b squared is 0, same thing. And on the third equation, this is important, I'm getting a squared plus b squared equals 10. That's the beauty. Now we can actually come up with a solution. Why? Because now we know that a squared and b squared are the same. So this means a squared is 5 and b squared is 5. Great. This one is going to give us basically two solutions each because a can be root 5 or a can be negative root 5. And the same thing goes for b. But is it true that a and b have to be equal all the time? No, their squares have to be equal. So I'm allowed to take root 5 with negative root 5, like a, b, c, let's say I'm trying to write an order triple, and of course c is 0 in this case. So this should satisfy our system. And you can definitely check it out. Just plug it in, you'll see that it satisfies the original system. But notice c equals 0 is not the only result, right? After coming up with c equals 0, let me go ahead and clear this a little bit so we can write underneath. And now c equals 0 gave us this. Now let's look at the alternative. So now suppose c does not equal 0 because we're already done with it. Divide both sides by c and now you're going to get something like this. This kind of gives us a relationship between a, b, c, which is nice because we could use it in our equations, right? Well, how can we use it? First of all, I just noticed that I can go ahead and add the second and the third equation. Let me go ahead and copy those. a squared plus c squared minus b squared is ac. And the third equation is a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 10, right? Okay. This should be AC. That looks like 9C. It's supposed to be AC. Okay, like the air conditioning. So, if you go ahead and add these equations up, that, sh that should only cancel out the B. And you're going to end up with something like this. 2A squared plus 2C squared equals AC plus 10. Is that going to help? Not necessarily, but at least we do know this. We can write C in terms of A and B or otherwise. Uh, for example, from here, I can isolate A and write the A as 2C minus 2C or not 2C. Do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. And now we can go ahead and plug it in here. But that's going to give us a relationship between B and C. So I will probably need another equation that I can use. But like I said earlier, 
this is probably going to be incomplete because uh, it doesn't look like a really easy solution. But again, by substitution, we should be able to do this. And the rest is yours. Okay, left as an exercise. Okay, please don't hate me for that. And we'll continue with the first method. Okay, because we did the second first, right? So my first method is actually really nice. In this case, since I thought about it first, uh, it's actually called the first method. Sometimes people ask like, when you do it second, is it a second? No, there's always an order and then we kind of decide on the order in which we do it. So the third method, uh, I don't think I'm going to go into the third one, but anyways. So with the first method, I'm, I want to use something super duper elegant. Okay, ready? First, I'm going to focus on the first two equations. By the way, I call this the first equation, I call this the second equation, and I call this the third equation. Get it? Okay, that's usually how they're named. And now, or numbered, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first, okay? And I want to add a squared to both sides so that my equation can look... Actually, never mind. I want to isolate the a squared. Okay, that, let me put it this way. How do I uh, isolate a squared? I put it on this side and then bring the bc over. So it's going to look like this b squared plus c squared minus root 3bc equals a squared. Of course, you want to have the a squared on the left-hand side, but I didn't, want to, I didn't want to do too many manipulations. I hope this makes sense. We can always switch sides around. And we, actually, we're going to do it uh, for a good reason. You know what that looks like? This is the inspiration for this problem. I can't talk. The inspiration is law of cosines. Make sense? What is law of cosines? Okay, let's go ahead and write it down a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Of course, how do we know that a, b, c are the side lengths of a triangle, right? Of course, they need to satisfy the, what is it called? The triangle inequality. I didn't tell you that, so, okay, you can blame me for that. But anyways, I should have mentioned that. But uh, this way we can approach it. So here's the coolest part. If you go ahead and set this equal to b squared plus c squared minus three, root 3bc, from here, b squared plus c squared cancels out, and the bc cancel out, and then we end up with something super nice, which is cosine a equals root 3 over 2. And since I'm assuming, again, that's my assumption, that this is a triangle, I want cosine to be positive. I don't want it to be in the fourth quadrant, obviously. So from here, it directly follows that A is 30 degrees, or you can call that, I guess, pi over 6 radians. Make sense? Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and look at another equation. How about the second one? Because the second equation is actually cooler. A squared plus C squared minus B squared equals AC. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing, put the b squared here, a squared plus c squared minus ac equals b squared. And from here, by switching sides and using the law of cosines one more time, we're getting the following. Uh, this can be written as a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. And by setting those equal and simplifying, we're getting ac also cancels out, cosine b equals 1 half, which means b is equal to 60 degrees or pi over 3. Awesome. We have a triangle. A is 30 degrees. B is 60 degrees. You know what that means? It means we have a 30, 60 triangle. And of course, the third angle needs to be 90. B is 60. So this is B. This is, was it C? A. And this is C. And what else do we know? Now it's time to look at the third equation. A squared plus B squared plus c squared is equal to 10. Now we know that this is a and this is b and this is c and the Pythagorean theorem applies. Yay! c squared plus c squared equals 10 and from here we get c equals root 5. Of course, c can also be negative root 5 because it doesn't have to be side lengths for triangle but suppose it's a triangle then c would be root 5. You get the idea? And by substitution you can find the other values. But guess what? With the first method, we found c equals 0. What happens if c is 0? That's a different story. So we kind of switched around. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.